if you don't have a fish finder or a depth finder to find out how deep the waters are you're fishing in, I'm going to show you three methods that I used to use before I had a fish finder to find out how deep the water was when I used to go fishing. But before I start this video right here, if you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button for me. If you are subscribed and you came back to watch the video, I appreciate you coming back to watch the video. So I'm going to jump into this and I'm going to show you how I used to do this right here. The first method that I used to use is this right here. So, paddle. This paddle right here has been used. <laughs> this is my first paddle I ever had. It's a four foot paddle is what it is. It's broke right here on the end. The little part that you hold on to is broke right here. It's broke right here. It's all flat. It's supposed to be rounded like that, but it's broke. But anyway, this paddle right here, I've used it a lot. But I used to take it, simple. Just take, stick it down in the water. If it went over four foot, well, if it went over the paddle, I knew it was over four foot. And uh, it used to have marks on it. I took a permanent marker a long time ago. And what I did was, is I took a tape measure. I took a tape measure and what I did was, I marked it every foot. And then in between every foot, I marked it a foot and a half, two foot and a half, three foot and a half. And just so I can tell what the depth was. Well. That's a good method, you know, because when you're in a boat, you don't have a motor or anything like that. You're sitting there paddling, you know, you're sitting there paddling. You think you found a deep spot, you stick it down in the water, wham. You know, it go over four foot, you're like, whoa, you got a deep old hole. Well, you know, them creeks and stuff, don't let them fool you, man, because them creeks, they hold decent sized fish in them. I know, because I used to fish them all the time. Well, this was a good method to do it, because when you're just paddling and you're trying to find somewhere to go, you know, you can just stick it straight down in the water. Well... It worked great and I wanted another way to figure out how to uh, how to find the depth of what I'm fishing to get a little bit more accurate kind of accurate well I'm gonna use this as an example it's a fishing pole you're gonna have a fishing pole on you when you fish well I'm just gonna use this pole right here as an example all right I fish with a lot of two-piece fishing poles so I can break them down or if I'm walking through the woods or whatever you know I can I can take and it's a whole lot more easier than you got a six foot rod trying to carry it through the woods and it's kind of thick out there well the top piece broke but it still had the eyelets so what I did was I measured from from the bell right here to the eyelet two foot so I grabbed it here and I pulled the line out until my hand hit the first eyelet which you know I had to make it a little bit more because the, the, the pole that I was using wasn't quite two foot from here to here. It was a whole lot more easier. So I went like two, four, six, bam. And the weight on the end, because I used to put a weight on the end, like a heavy weight, like a three ounce weight, to find out how deep it was. It was a little bit more simpler, you know. It, it kind of gave me a little bit more accurate read and I felt like, you know. But, you know, now I don't know if it really did or didn't, but it helped me out finding deep holes. And uh, it was a little bit more simpler because all I had to do was, one, two, you know what I'm saying? Two, four, six, eight, ten, whatever. And then I can just build it back up and throw it back in the boat. Well, that method works great. Works very great. But then I wanted to know, hey, is the bottom of the water muddy? Or is it rocky? Or what? And I wanted a little bit more accurate reading. Now, them first two methods with the paddle and the pole, anybody got it. I mean, you can even use it with a non-broken pole. You can use it with your actual pole, you know what I mean? You can do the same thing to give you a good reading on how deep you're fishing. Well, my last method, I got smart. And I went to the dollar store and bought me a, bought me a tape measure with something like this right here. Well, a tape measure is a little bit more accurate because, you know, you got readings on it. If you look at this one right here, I've actually used it. It was one of the tape measures that I used. You can tell it's all messed up. It's kind of rusted a little bit. But this is one of the tape measures that I used to use. And uh, this it works great, man. It, a tape measure works really good. And that that's like the ultimate thing that I used to use right here after I quit using a paddle and a fishing pole to figure out the depth. I'd take, man, check it. I'd take and just pull it out. Just pull it out until I hit the bottom. And then, I, then, you know, you get a good reading on how deep of the water you're fishing. And uh, when you stick it down in the water, 
the end right here, when you stick it down in the water and you figure out the depth that you're fishing, man, you can push it. You can push it like push it down in the water harder. And when you do, you can you can feel it if the bottom is muddy or if it's rocky because the end of the tape measure right here, the end of the tape measure will go down into the water if it's muddy. You know, you can, you'll you'll feel it like you'll just feel the it won't have resistance on it. If it's a hard bottom, it'll have resistance and you won't be able to push it. It won't feel slushy. You know what I mean? Like it just won't. That's the only way I can really explain it. It won't feel slushy or muddy. You won't feel it go down in it. And if it's a hard bottom, it'll just straight stop. You know what I mean? It won't. It won't keep going. Well, this method works great whenever there's no current. When you got current, you know what I'm saying. What's gonna happen is you is gonna want to bend. And another thing I figured out was you can put a weight on the end right here, and it'll help keep it pushed down. And if you can tell how the tape measure is bent, let me see if I can't get it closer. The ta a tape measure is bent. You know what I mean? One way is kind of flat, the other way is kind of curved, like like that right there. Well, if the water's pushing this way, and you stick the tape measure down in the water, it can't be heavy current. You know what I'm saying? It can be a little bit of current, but not heavy current. And if the water's pushing this way, make sure you got the part that's bent back toward the current. You know what I mean? Like the way it's pushing, so it, it, it's harder for it to break it. Like it takes a little bit more strength for it to break it. If it's this way right here, it'll just it'll just bend with no problem. But that right there is one of my ultimate ways right here is a tape measure, man. You can get one from the dollar store for a dollar, man. It's a whole lot more cheaper than a two hundred dollar fish finder for sure. But until you save your money up, and you get your fish finder, get a fish finder, man. You know what I'm saying? You won't have to worry about none of that right there. You can just look down and watch it. And tell you where your deep hole is at but if you know if you're going to be fishing in creeks little small creeks and stuff like that and you're not really in big deep waters or water i mean you can get a tape measure to go 25 foot but i ain't never took no tape measure and just went 25 foot down in the water with it just to see just see how deep it is <clears throat> i took and got a fish finder i saved up the money i kept saving and saving to get me a fish finder man you know what i mean it took me a while to do it because i didn't really want to spend the money but I wanted to show you the three little simple methods, man, that I used to use, and hopefully that helps somebody out right there. And, you know, I, I, I know that some of the stuff that I do is, is kind of funny, you know what I'm saying, like the way I used to do things a long time ago to find out how deep stuff was, or little methods or whatever that I use, and the way I show on some of my videos on how I did things. But, man, they're proving to work, dude, and I just want to share things like that with y'all, my subscribers, and maybe my new subscribers that subscribe to the channel. You know, you can get out there and go fishing, man, without having to spend a lot of money. But tape measure, man, is going to be your best friend right here. It was one of my favorite methods after I did all this right here with paddles and stuff like that. The tape measure, that was the best way to figure out the depth. You can find out if it's muddy bottom. You can find out if it's a hard bottom. You can find out if it's rocks or anything on it. You know, once you get over like seven foot deep with a tape measure, it starts getting kind of hard. But when you fish in little small creeks and stuff and it's not really that deep, but you want to find them holes, that's the way to do it right there is the tape measure. That's the way to go. Tape measure is your best friend. I know for a fact because it's a proven method for me and it will work for you.